Heavenly Father, we praise you and we worship you. Yes, too. We thank you that you are the Messiah, that you came. You came for each one of us. You came that we might have life. And I worship you, Father. I worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Read from the Word of God. Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 1 to verse 14. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrene was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn child. <coughs> and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Amen. which is Christ the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Thank you. And saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest. Peace and goodwill towards men. We go ahead with verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing, which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. Those who seek Jesus, those who seek Jesus, is wise. The Bible says there was no room in the end. At this particular time of the year, the people will go about their own business. Just as today, for many don't have time for others. Nor, not that they don't want to, it's just that there's just so much going on. Nevertheless, history was fulfilled in prophecy. For what was taking place now was foretold many years before. God controls all history. But the decree of Emperor Augustus, Jesus was born in the very town prophesied for his birth in Michael chapter 5, verse 2. And it reads accordingly, But thou, Bethlehem, a prophet, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, 
whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. That was a prophecy that was given centuries before. For those who doubt the birth of Jesus and their meaning do, they don't really want to allow the Word of God to come real in their life simply because they can. If they don't believe in Jesus, the whole, they don't have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Scripture to believers. I'm reading an article, and I very seldom I do this, but I believe I need to know a little bit about something. Somebody that found fault and said none of this was true. This was all fables. Well, to them, it might be fables. But to me, it's the birth of Jesus Christ, a Messiah, Amen. our Lord and Savior. The one who says he will walk alongside of us. People will say, well, how can that be? He said at the right hand of the Father. Well, he told us in John. It's expedient that I go, and if I go, I will send the comfort of the paracletos, the Holy Ghost, to be with you and God you. Amen. To me, it's real. But so many people are trying to find fault with it. We even have believers trying to find fault with it. I don't know whether they're believers or not. But I don't have a problem. Like I said, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there are spiritual gifts. I spoke on one as, as a, a giving. The gift of giving. There's another gift that many people overlook while they're searching for other gifts that actually will edify them. One of them is the gift of faith. You might say, well, I have faith. Amen, you do. You've got to have faith to believe. If you don't have faith, you can't believe. But then the Bible says there's a gift of faith. And the gift of faith is simply this. You believe what God says and you don't doubt it. You step out in it. That's the gift of faith. Do we have the gift of faith? Do we have the gift of faith to believe what the Word of God says? Or are we going to sort of justify what we do by trying to find fault with the Word? Or trying to find fault with others? I have faith. Peter had to have faith. He stepped out the boat. Are you willing to step out of your boat? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to say, God, I need help? I need help to have faith in what your word says so I can step out of whatever is holding me back in order for me to enter in to all that you have for me. We can be saved and still not have all of the blessings that God wants to bless us for. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're saved by the blood of Jesus. But if you got resentment in your heart, if you have hatred in your heart towards one or somewhere else, that is hindering, that is hindering the free flowing of God's blessings upon you and your life. The Bible says, Jesus says, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Having life more abundantly is being joyful, is being cheerful. No matter what the situation might be, whatever the condition might be, Jesus says, I come that you might have. The devil comes and steals what God has given you. I want to be joyous. I want to be joyful all year round. I want to be joyful tomorrow. I want to be joyful. I remember when I was diagnosed with clear cell skin cancer. Very rare and very deadly. I caught myself saying, yeah, it's so rare and it's so deadly. That means you're going to be able to minister to people that you would never have the opportunity to if you did not have cancer. And the Bible, Mike in the church was fasting and praying and I went on a mission trip and I come back and I remember the VA doctor as his back was toward uh, back, uh, uh, me and I as his face was on the computer screen and I saw him do this. He says, you don't have it. Amen. 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 That's documented. Amen. It's documented. With the VA, I don't know how good they keep record though. It don't really make any difference. But I believe by faith, I believe that whatever situation I might be in, that God is going to... I had a heart attack. Mickey was there. That's documented too. Had a heart attack. The best thing could have happened to me. Now I can... I, I, I just, it is. And, and right when they was getting ready to roll me in, uh, go upstairs at St. Francis, I said, let's have a prayer. Mickey was there. We held a prayer meeting before they moved me to the second floor. And 
I had a visit with the doctor a couple of weeks ago, and, and he gave me a it, it, uh, Islam, I think his name. And he gave me a bit, well, he's about my size, and he gave me a hug. You believe? Give me a hug. They can't find nothing wrong with me, but I tell you what, I'm ready to go be with the Lord. I'm ready right now. But do we have faith to believe that God is who He is, did what He said He's going to do, and did what, amen, are y'all with me? Those who seek to be wise. Those who seek to be wise does not find fault with each other, but rather they learn from each other. Those who are wise seek to know God's Word. In God's Word, there is life. There is life in God's Word. Amen. To know the Word is to become wise. But just because you know the Word, just because somebody might be able to quote a Bible verse, a chapter, or let's say a Bible, the book, let's say Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, they might be able to bring it back into memory. That doesn't mean they're wise. The only way they can be wise is when they allow the Holy Spirit to reveal what God's Word is saying to them. You might have a photostatic memory. I'm not impressed if you have a photostatic memory. I am impressed if you love others the way you want God to love you. Do you ain't y'all with me? Praise the Lord. Life without God is empty. God wants to and will give one of those contents that one finds lacking in their life. What is lacking in your life? People today, just as in Jesus' day, the only difference today, we got vehicles. We pay, I don't know what vehicles cost anymore, I'd be afraid to even look. But gas is coming down, but it's still a whole lot higher than it was when I was a kid. It was 23.9 cents a gallon when I was a kid. So, but those people in those days didn't have to pay insurance for a car. But if they had a camel, they had to feed it. Amen? But people in those days were seeking something greater. People in our day are seeking the same thing. And what it is is not to ride a camel, but rather to have the Holy Spirit in your life giving you the peace and the joy and the excitement and the expectations about life. Amen? The true meaning of life is to be found in Christ. The true and fulfilling life can only be found in Jesus. Just as Jesus opened the minds of the people of His day, Jesus opens the mind of His people today through the Holy Spirit. That's what this time of year represents. God becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us. Those who are wise know the times in which they live in. We need to know the times that we're living in right now. We need to have insight. There's another spiritual gift that I've been talking about. I've talked about too, but there's another one that a lot of people overlook but I find so rewarding. It's a spiritual gift of discernment to be able to see and understand what people are saying. The Bible says there will be many false prophets. The Bible says there will be wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. Well, I want to know what God's Word says. I pray for the spiritual gift of discernment. I love the gift of giving. I love it. I love the gift of faith. I love it. But I also love the gift of discernment. Because I believe we need it. It was needed in Jesus' day. It's needed in our day as well. There's people that's going through their lives right now. Seeking and searching. And the only true meaning is Jesus Christ. That's the only true meaning that's going to bring them from where they are to where they want to be. Nothing else is going to do it. Nothing else. 
is Jesus Christ. We need to know the times that we're living in to be able to understand it, to be able to become overcomers. And I believe what this world needs more than anything else right now is the loving hand of Jesus. Someone to say, I love you. Someone to say, I care for you. Those who are wise are ready for the Lord's return. Just like Jesus came to the earth, and He did come, that nobody can deny that. But there are a lot of people today that are offended at the cross. Why are they offended at the cross? They're offended at the cross because the cross points them to their sin. The cross points them to their sin. But I'm so thankful that through Jesus Christ, He was born. He was born a baby. And just like a baby has to be protected, now, now God could have sent, let's get this straight, God could have sent a legion of angels. God could have did that. But God chose to use people. God chose Mary, a virgin, a young virgin, to become the mother of baby Jesus. Then God chose then God chose others to support and to help. If you get into Scripture, you'll read that the king of Agrippa had all the children from two years old now killed. But yet God took care of his child. Not in a miraculous way, but in a way that humans were part of. To me, that's fascinating, isn't it? You know what else is fascinating? Why would the God of all creation, and Colossians, it tells us that Jesus is the instrument of all creation. Why? Why would He come to this earth and become flesh? In order to go to the cross, we need to look at the cradle, but we need to look at the cross. Why? Because He loves us. Amen. That's what this time of year represents, the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Those who are wise are ready for the Lord's return. One is wise when one allows the Holy Spirit to lead. And we allow in the Holy Spirit to lead. Amen. I want God to show me the way. I want God to direct my course. I want God to be every part of my life. We're going through a busy time right now. Busy, 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 busy. But let's take time to praise Jesus. Amen. That's why we're here. We hear because of Jesus and for no other reason. Amen. We hear because God took time out to come visit us. Amen. We need to take time out to visit Him. Amen. Are we ready for the Lord's return? Amen. Are we ready? Amen. Are we ready? Are we prepared? How can one be ready? By looking for Jesus Christ. By living for Jesus. By waiting for Jesus. By believing in the Word of God. Amen. Wise men of old, as well as today, are still searching, searching for the true meaning of life. Jesus is the true meaning of life. Amen. You can't find Jesus in Him. You can't find Jesus in the program, oh, he might be there. You find Jesus in his word. Amen. His word is first. Amen. Everything else is secondary. Mm -hmm. So I pray that we bow our knees and thank God for his love, for his mercy, 
of His grace and His forgiveness. And we thank God that He loved us more than we could ever imagine. That's what this time of year represents. The birth of a baby who grew into a man who gave His love for you and I. And for the one who's coming back to claim us. The true being of this time of year. The true being for the fall of the year. Now let's worship Christ. And praise Him. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen.